For this Ask Dr. David video, somebody asked, is herd immunity realistic or achievable for the coronavirus? Now, first understanding is the way that the term herd immunity is being used in the news is not actually the definition because what's being talked about is natural herd immunity as everybody catching the wild virus. And of course, there are implications to that. But the definition of herd immunity is more that enough people are protected against the virus through their own immune systems that not as many people will catch it and therefore there are fewer people to spread it to other people and therefore the virus goes away because it doesn't have the ability to spread in, in a manner where more people are getting affected than are getting rid of the disease or clearing it from their bodies. Since we know this isn't a chronic disease in terms of the virus living, even though the implications of the virus, the inflammation that can happen can certainly last for months. And of course, the unfortunate aspect of when people die as have over 180,000 people at this point. So understanding that, yes, if enough people catch the wild case, then that is one thing that can be accomplished. But of course, that means lots of people will die Lots of many more people will get sick and lots of people will have long term health issues, as we are seeing already. And so that is, of course, a question that society has to ask and an individual needs to ask. Is that something that they are willing to accept? Now, everybody is entitled to make their own decision, in my opinion, um, getting back to where we were seeing um, close to 80,000 cases a day or when there were times in New York where the the system was not able to handle, there were no beds and, and several thousand people were dying a day. You know, right now we have a thousand people who are dying a day and that's still a lot of people, um, you know, but at least at this point we are not seeing the um, hospitals being overrun where there are no more beds and no more ICUs, which of course, when we talked originally about bending the curve, that was the primary goal. Now, of course, the other way that people get herd immunity is through a vaccine. Now, I know people have asked me what my thoughts are about a vaccine, and at this point I say, what vaccine are you talking about? Because there is no vaccine for me to assess at this point. And certainly once that um, a vaccine becomes available and data is available, I'll be able to assess this and I will certainly provide information as to what I'm seeing there. But for now, you know, the question is, if vaccine is going to be the way that herd immunity is to be accomplished, then there's a lot of concerns that a lot of people have with Operation Warp Speed, where the discussion is trying to speed through a vaccine in several months, when the quickest it's ever been done is four years and typically averages closer to 10 years, what are the implications going to be if the large safety studies are not done? And in all honesty, I don't know that 30,000 people in a safety study is going to be enough to, be, to know if that's true for people who may have rarer conditions, people who have autoimmune conditions, people who have weakened immune systems, people who have hyperinflammation, allergies, asthma, eczema. Um, and with all of those types of conditions, it will be interesting to see if they're even being captured in a 30,000 person study. Um, and of course, because of this speed, we are also in a situation where there's a tremendous amount of hesitancy towards getting a vaccine. 35%, 50%, those are the numbers that we're hearing about people who have hesitancy and are saying that they will not catch a vaccine, or take a vaccine, even if one was available. So we are now left with the situation that to obtain herd immunity, that one of those two things or a combination has to occur. Now, from my perspective, um, part of the reason why I am not advocating that people go out and get the disease is right now we do not have good enough ways to treat it. Now, there are therapeutics that are coming out. We've heard about um, the um, dexmethasone, which is a steroid that reduces the inflammation. So as people are getting sicker, that they can take something to reduce the inflammation, which is where the really dangerous situations are when the inflammation, the cytokine storm that we hear about is, 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 uh, is overwhelming the body. So, um, you know, over time, we will have more therapeutic options. Um, we have ideas about natural um, um, in ways of reducing that type of inflammation as well. But of course, nobody's studying those types of things at the levels that we would need to know to know what proper dosings of things like zinc or quercetin or um, of curcumin, things that could potentially reduce the inflammation. But we don't know what the proper dosing is. And of course, with big pharma, we're not going to know those answers because that's not where the resources are going to be put in. And I don't see any indication that that's going to be taken care of through federal funds either. So as with most things um, related to coronavirus, there's not a lot of good news, nor a lot of good answers, but it's a very good question to take into account. Have a nice day.